Good evening, and welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals for May of 2014. Carol, would you be so kind to call the roll? Uh, Mr. Cockett? Mr. Dillon? Here. Mr. Loisel? Here. Mr. Massiso? Here. Mr. Richard? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Uh, with Mr. Crockett absent at this point, we're going to allow the two alternates to vote so that it will be five for the majority. And uh, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance to open up the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start the evening with the first appeal, which is appeal number 2415. Uh, excuse me? Should we approve minutes? Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a motion on the minutes from last meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? That's approved, five. <laughs> now we will start with the first appeal of the evening, which is 2415, a practical difficulty variance appeal for Donald and Susan Hamill of 3 Bay Street. Uh, they're looking for demolition and reconstruction of a structure 12 feet from the north side of the property line, 5 feet from the front, from the front property line in an R4A zone. Um, Mr. Fisher's already at the podium. If you could please state your name and your affiliation to the appeal, please. Thank you. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Jim Fisher. work with Northeast Civil Solutions. We're here with Mr. and Mrs. Hamill, representing them this afternoon or this evening uh, as far as their request for a practical difficulty variance. Uh, unlike many variances that uh, I get to, uh, to put before this board, practical difficulty means that we're not in the shoreline zone, um, which is somewhat unusual for us, uh, given the preponderance of those that we have in the Pine Point and uh, Higgins Beach areas. But uh, that makes this one a little bit uh, easier as far as the criteria is concerned. Uh, what I'd like to bring up to you initially before we even uh, begin, or before I, in, in the interest of brevity, my, my quick uh, presentation here is that they actually uh, submitted and received and recorded a variance from this board in 2009, but given the era that we were in at that point, they discovered really after the fact that they were not able to uh, go forward with that variance at the time. Uh, the building was virtually the same, the proposal for the building at that point was virtually the same as it is now. Um, Mr. Wilson, who uh, actually designed this building as well, is also with us this evening, uh, and uh, his designs you will find within your packet. Uh, the house is essentially, or the proposed house is essentially just a little bit larger, square footage wise, uh, than the one that's there right now. But in doing so, we're proposing to raise this house, uh, tear it down, raise it uh, completely, and then rebuild it. Uh, our, our clients have owned this house for quite a number of years and uh, have put a fair amount of money into trying to upkeep it. It is what many of the houses along the beach areas, generally speaking, well, this is quite a ways from the beach, but um, in the Pine Point and Higgins Beach areas tends to be, and that they were built, this house in particular was built 90 years ago, and uh, it was on a uh, cinder block, it is on a cinder block foundation. Uh, you can, when you take a look at the house, you can actually see that it's got about a 1% grade lean to the right. Uh, it's just one of these houses that was uninsulated when it was created. Uh, the rooms are exceptionally small. They do not conform anywhere near to code today. There was no code at the time. Uh, so what they would like to do is, rather than pouring money into a, a hole that keeps on eating it to try to keep it up, is saying, okay, as our principal residence, and this will be their principal residence, they intend to uh, rebuild this and then move into it, uh, bringing that up to uh, current codes, as it were. Um, as far as the specifics are concerned, again, the, it is part of a subdivision that was created about uh, 85 years ago, uh, and uh, along with most of the other houses, was built, uh, generally speaking, about 80 years ago. Uh, it has a garage on the property that was subsequently uh, converted. It's no longer used as a garage. We're not doing anything with that garage or with that uh, structure. We're focusing only on the existing house. It is a two-story house. We are proposing to make it three stories, but not the, it's not the 35 feet. Um, because of the very small size of the lot in which it sits, uh, 35 feet would require a uh, considerable setback that we literally can't meet. There is no, well, there is a building envelope, but it's so small um, on this uh, uh, particular lot as, as it is in most of the lots in that area that uh, any structure beyond basically a shed wouldn't fit into that envelope. Uh, that's 30 feet from the front, 15 from the sides and the rear. What we're proposing in conjunction with uh, rebuilding this is basically using the same footprint it's got a, uh, a small addition out the back, um, but we're um, proposing to make it considerably less non-conforming than it is right now. Right now, on the westerly side, it's about nine and a half feet 
from the property line, not about it is, and we're proposing to make it 12 feet from that line. It's one foot from the street line, and we're proposing to uh, move that back to five feet and still essentially try to keep the same character of the house as far as its um, configuration is concerned. Given that, I'd be happy then to uh, answer any questions uh, that you may have, address any comments, and then we can go through the criteria uh, for the practical difficulty, and we can go from there. Uh, one thing that would help me is if you could go through and clearly state the differences from the original appeal to the appeal that sits today, envelope size, setback, the differences between the original appeal and this one. The original appeal was virtually the same footprint. Um, it actually kept the, uh, the location of the stairs, uh, the front stairs focused at uh, the one, or focused at the front and only one foot away. Um, we are eliminating that section of the, the access to the building. We're actually turning it. Um, we basically, when they came to us to say, hey, this is working, this could work well, and it's like, well, if we can orient it a different way, it would be a lot better to try to get it back from the street a little bit more. Um, and they certainly agreed with that. So the entrance will actually be front-oriented but from the side. Um, and then on the back, there was a uh, proposed extension of the back that uh, uh, was also approved, and we're proposing to expand that slightly. So the house is going to be, I believe, it's 61, feet, 61 square feet larger than it is now. Um, and I don't have a specific uh, number for There was an expansion at that point as well. Um, I don't know exactly what the difference is, but uh, we're essentially about the same. Okay. Mr. Fisher, is the expansion on the back, is that within the envelope, or is that, is that still outside the envelope? Most of that expansion is within the envelope, except for the westerly side, because the orientation of the, or the situation of the house right now is uh, toward, as you're looking at the lot from the street, it's toward the, the house that's sitting on the right-hand side. Uh, please refer to your plans when you take a look at that. The building envelope is, uh, again, exceptionally small. It's 30 feet back from the front, which basically encompasses the back of the house, but not all of the back of the house, and a little bit of the garage. Um, so you've got a, a fairly small envelope, again, within which virtually nothing, you, you wouldn't be able to build a house back in, in that envelope. So anything that would be done there would need a uh, variance of sorts. One thing I noted from the original appeal is that they needed a permit by rule from the DEP. Yes. Where do we stand on that? We have it. Okay. And Brian has it. Are there any letters on uh, on this appeal? We have one. Okay. This is a, a letter from Sheila Roy from 131 Logging Trail Road, Danbury, Connecticut. Dear Brian, I'd like to tell you that I fully support the plans that Susan and, and Don Hamill have submitted for their home on Bay Street. This home was owned by my family in 1944 till the time that the Hamill family bought it from my mother. I'm thrilled they are remaining on Bay Street and support the plans they have submitted for their home. I presently live directly across the street from, from their house. If, further que if there are any further questions, please call or email. So. And Mr. Chair, in the point of order. Um, yeah. I have two other, I know it's last minute, but we've got two <laughs> other letters of um, support, if I may, for the media butters. I know they're last minute, but we will bring it in. You're welcome. This is a letter from Phil Curry for Bay Street. This is to confirm that we fully support the appeal of our neighbors and abutters, Susan and Don Hamill, to demolish and reconstruct their home on 3 Bay Street. And this is from Linda, I'm going to screw up the name, I'm sorry, uh, Despre of 1 Bay Street. This confirms that I fully support the appeal of neighbors on 3 Bay Street. So another two letters in the affirmative. Any other questions or comments from the board? One thing I would like to say from a, a board standpoint, since Mr. Crocker is now here, um, Mr. Richards will stand down as a voter. As Just so you guys, uh, you folks in the audience understand, um, you can still give comment. We appreciate when you give feedback, so please do. Uh, but he will not be a voting member at this point. Welcome. All right, Stanley. No problem. So I think it's pretty well straightforward. I mean, it's not a big variance from what you had originally come forward to and had the appeal approved for back in 2009. Uh, um, again, I, I look at this as being very straightforward. Again, we had approved it. Um, not a great change to the envelope, to the design, to uh, it's very much the same. So 
I am looking for some input from the board if you feel the same or would yeah, like to get I, uh, some other comments out there. Yeah, I think I think mainly because uh, we have it's it's less non-conforming uh, than the other uh, since we're since the, the uh, setbacks are a little bit further back than they were. Um, I don't have any real issues with it. So. Okay. I'm comfortable with it as well. Okay. I, I came in late, but it sounds like it's much more in guidelines where we would want it to be than was originally approved. So. Agreement. I agree with it. It's, uh, it was approved before, so it doesn't look like anything's radically changed. Okay. Uh, Mr. Richards, do you have any comments? I don't. Okay. I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting, and I'm going to ask questions of the uh, town representative. Excuse me? I'm going to open it first. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to open it to anyone who would like to speak to this uh, appeal from the public. Seeing none, I will now close it and go back to the uh, board portion of the meeting. Um, from a town standpoint, any comment? Uh, no, it's pretty straightforward. I, I uh, outlined the issues in our staff comments that uh, I supplied to you, and uh, I can confirm uh, I do have a copy of the permit by rule Excellent. Uh, that was issued for 2914. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. it is in place. All right, great. Thank you, Mr. Longstaff. Any other comments, questions, or a motion from the board? I would uh, move to approve 2415 uh, as filed. Now, what I'm going to do is not go through the questions for the appeal, since the change in the appeal is identical to what we had last time. So I think you've answered the question significantly. Unless you guys have a problem with that, um, I think we can move forward without going through the questions. I'll second that and the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Appeal is approved. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. The second appeal for the evening is Appeal 2418 from Rhonda McDonald of Five Moses Lane. It's an appeal to operate a craft business in her home, an occupation at, in a R4A zone. It's a special exception appeal. If uh, Mrs. McDonald would like to approach the podium, please state your name and uh, give us a brief explanation or your name and address and a brief explanation of the appeal, please. My name is uh, Rhonda McDonald, and uh, I'm here to um, see about uh, operating a business from my home. Um, it's just a, uh, uh, a crafting business where I just would make uh, signs out of wood and uh, hand-painted items. Um, it would just be out of um, a small desk in a bedroom of our home, which I have a picture of here. So not anything large. Um, everything that I would be doing would be basically online. I wouldn't own a shop or anything on the property. Um, so there wouldn't be any uh, ex excess or any additional traffic to the lot. Um, it would be, you know, business would either done by delivery or to the mail. And I brought a couple of my samples. I do. Uh, do personalized work. Um, also, just uh, some home decor items and stuff. Very nice. Um, 
anybody have any further questions? Gentlemen of the board, any questions or comments on the appeal? Again, this type of appeal is pretty straightforward. You have the right to have an in-home business, but it has to come before us so that it meets the requirements. There are some special exception questions that we'll go through. We'll do that in a few minutes. Sure. And I see that you've already answered it, but we'll let you speak to them on the record. Okay. Uh, one question I have is the materials that you have coming in hmm? would paint any other products you need to come in to, uh, to do the crafts. Will those be delivered in by UPS, or will that be delivered by... No. No, it'll be me just going to the hardware store and picking them up. Okay. Yep. And you won't have on-site displays or no. anything like that? No. Nope. Is there a plan for a sign on your property? No, there's not. Okay. Yeah. Any letters on this? No. No letters? I'm going to op the, open the meeting up to the public. Would anybody from the public like to speak to this appeal? Seeing no response, we'll close it to the public meeting again. Back to the board for questions, comments. I, I see really absolutely no issues with this. It uh, seems like a very simple home business. It, 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 I don't believe we're going to have any issues until we go through the uh, standards on this, but uh, we'll see what the answers are there. But so far, no issues. I'm in agreement with Mr. Stark. It's pretty straightforward. It's a yeah. small business. Um, shouldn't affect traffic. Or this is just yourself, or just myself. Yep. What about? I mean, I don't. I know one of the questions which we can go through, but just erosion and stuff for um, disposal of items that you may use in your business, that would be normal. Um, you don't foresee to have to have any anything special for no. any type of paint or anything. No, it's just, it's, it's just water-based acrylic paint. It's nothing fancy. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking for any, any chemicals or anything oh, no, like no, that no, no you chemicals. may need to, to dispose on. Oh, nothing. Would you be sawing the wood there to different lengths? Yes. Yep. And the saw is in the bedroom? It's in, it's in the basement. Yep. Okay. Mr. Longstaff, any questions or comments? or? No. Uh, I reviewed the, the uh, plans. Um, she certainly isn't taking up more than 1,000 square feet of floor area in her mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. This activity, I see no issues from a code perspective. Okay. Mr. Richards, any questions? No, it seems pretty straightforward. All right, why don't we take a few minutes and go through the questions so you can respond to those. Uh, standards question A is, the proposed use will not create any unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewer, disposal emissions of the air or water, or other aspects of design or operation. You can feel free to read in what you had or go right off the cuff. It's up to you. Okay. Um, I just said no, it will not create any new um, sewage disposal emissions or um, anything to the air or water. Okay. Um, Question B is the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when adding to the existing or foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. There will be no additional traffic. The proposed use will not create a public safety problem, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or, or police protection than the existing uses in the neighborhood. It would not need any additional municipal services. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. It will have no effect. The proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proxim proximity to other structures, and density of development. There will be no alterations in size or appearance made to the existing property. Okay. If located in a shoreland zone, in is this? It is not. Okay, thank you. The applicant has significant right, title, and interest in the site proposed to use the to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, they own the current okay. property. And the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section to comply with anything that we asked for. I do. You sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question, which is I. The proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect mm -hmm. to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Nope. Um, there will be 
very little noise um, other than uh, occasional use of a saw, which is very rare. So. And what would you predict for the use of the saw, the, the time of that? Um, like hour-wise? Yeah. When would you be performing this work? Um, it would be in the early afternoon. Okay. So you think normal hours of, say, 8 in the morning to 5 at night? Oh, yeah. It, it would be probably around, say, noon to 3. Okay. Any questions based on the standard questions, gentlemen? I just had one quick question. Um, as far as purchasing of the product, mm -hmm. are people coming to get it at your location? No, they are not. Um, I'll either be delivering it or it will be done through the mail. Okay, so you don't anticipate anybody actually coming over to the... Maybe one or two, but it would be rare. It would be... My only real question would be around the coatings that you'll be using. Mm -hmm. What would you foresee as the volume of coatings that you'll have stored on site? Um, it's it's going to be done uh, made to order, so I won't actually have anything unless somebody orders it. Okay, so you'll be ordering your paints per the yep. orders that you have, yep. so you won't have large volumes of no. paint stored nope. on site. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, and in respect to that, the quantities you're ordering are going to be specific to doing the job yes. as opposed to having a lot of leftovers that you may need to store. Right. Yep. Okay. I'm good. Any questions, comments, or a motion? Move to approve Appeal 2418 as presented. Second. Mr. Marcis, did you have a comment before we move on? Okay. Oh, hold, please. Um, how close is this uh, closest house? Neighbor? Mm. Uh, maybe could he hear the saw? Um, uh, could they hear the saw? No, not really. Oh. It's in the basement. If I do a cut, it's probably one or two a day. It's very minimal. You're pretty secluded then. Yes, yes, we are. So and everything that all these signs are made by you. Mm -hmm. You won't be buying signs no. and bringing them in? Nope. How would we know that? It really wouldn't matter, to be honest with you. That would be within our right to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at the map. It doesn't look like there's anything. Yeah. Well, I think this one is pretty darn straightforward. Yeah. And uh, I think you've answered all the questions uh, in the affirmative, and I think I'm in agreement with them all myself. I don't see any issues with uh, with moving this forward. But again, I'll look to the board for any questions, comments, or an appeal uh, motion. Mm -hmm. I I would say that uh, we don't need to go through the questions individually, just be because none of us have any questions on them. If, if we had any questions on them, then we'd. We would normally go through these individually and vote on them individually, but because this is so straightforward, um, I, I just see no problem with it. I am in agreement. I agree. Mr. Richards, you've been awful quiet. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing to say, no. Okay. It seems yeah. pretty straightforward. Do I have a motion from the board? Second. We already had a motion. Yeah. We did? Yeah. Seconded? It wasn't seconded. I, I second. All those in favor? It's five in the affirmative. Good luck. Thank you. requirements of that or do we not even need right. to go in that? Uh, I don't think we even need to go that way unless she wanted to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I just don't want to have it come up later. Certainly. Thank you though. Next appeal is uh, practical difficulty appeal twenty four nineteen. Patrick and Cynthia Cotter of fifty two Greenwood Ave. Looking for a vertical expansion of a home 9.59 feet from the Houghton Street line, 11.25 feet from the Greenwood Avenue line, 8.88 feet 
from the south side of the property line and 7.23 feet from the west side property line. Building coverage would be 31.15%. Please state your name and Walter Wilson from the design company. Thank you. Please proceed, Mr. Wilson. Well, I'm representing Patrick and Cynthia Carter in this application. Um, the property has frontage on Greenwood and Houghton. <coughs> the <me>. lot contains <coughs> about 2,989 square feet and is now improved with a one-story house. Um, the existing lot coverage on the building is 823.03. I'd like to correct my letter where he had 933, uh, or 27.74%. Now, the original cottage was built in 1900. It's a small cottage. It's 20 feet wide and 36 feet long. Uh, several years ago, the support posts were removed and a concrete foundation was installed. The foundation contains a crawl space and a partial full foundation that has some storage in the mechanical room. The only access to this space is from the outside bulkhead. The home contains two bedrooms, one bathroom, a small kitchen, and a living room. The original front porch has been enclosed and is used as a sitting area and a sleeping area when needed. Only one of these rooms is wider than 7 foot 10 inches. As can be expected, the building frame and structure does not meet the building code required today. There is very little insulation. The windows do not meet code, and the exterior walls are 2 by 4, 24 on center. The electrical and plumbing system needs to be updated. The current floor plan utilizes the interior walls that were constructed in 1900. It is not suitable for the spatial requirements that are needed for a home today. So in order to renovate the home for today's need, an expansion is required. <coughs> the location of the building on a, small corner, on a small corner lot limits the ability to expand horizontally. And the only option is to expand vertically by adding a second floor. Because the existing building is only 20 feet wide, I am proposing a small horizontal expansion to accommodate the stairwell to the second floor, as well as the front and rear entry stairs from the grade to the first floor. Um, in your opening comments, you read the uh, variances that we're looking for. Um, the variances, of course, are not based on the existing structure. The location is based on the setbacks that are imposed by the code. So even though the um, building, for example, on Greenwood is, um, um, let me say, is not going to be changed, it's going to be in the same location, the same setback, we still have to have a variance in order to put the second floor on based on a 30-foot setback, and that's why in the Greenwood side we have to ask for an 18.75-foot reduction for a variance only because they're going vertical over the existing established building foundation. Um, basically what this amounts to is um, the rooms inside the building are just definitely too small. I mean, the kitchen's only six and a half feet wide, uh, and there's only a room for a little tiny table in the corner. And in order to accommodate any reasonable layout, we have to go to the second floor on this and put the bedrooms on the second floor. On the floor plan, you'll notice there is a small bedroom still on the first floor. That's to accommodate uh, uh, elderly in-laws that may be coming over and can't manipulate up and down the stairs. <coughs> be happy to answer any questions you have. Mr. Wilson, could you... Um could you bring your drawings up just so we can get it on record? I want, I want to like you to show the uh, the existing site plan as opposed to the proposed site plan. Uh, we don't. If you just bring them right up, that's fine. Um, and we'll get it on this camera. Yeah, yeah. Just gotta bring it up. You actually come before us, and you can point yeah, right at this camera. That'd be fine. If you come towards us. So, so you're saying that the additional coverage are those uh, the stairwell on the south side, as well as the expansion there on the south side, and then on the west side, the expansion of the. It, it, what is that? Is that a uh, 
is that just an overhang or just a stairwell going up that's making the addition on the, on the yes, back? Yes, on that, on that side of the property, there is, a, right now, I think I sent you a picture you may have in your packet. Um, this photograph right here. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that shows a stairwell that leads up to a side porch, but if you notice on the bottom of the stairway, there's a brick walkway with a granite curbing. Uh -huh. Well, that granite curbing runs all the way out to Greenwood. Okay. And all we're proposing to do is just slide the stairs forward on that brick walk. We aren't really ex extending it any closer to the lot line, although because of the angle of the lot line, there's that little, what, seven or eight inch differential. Um, so we aren't, we aren't trying to make an addition that, that uh, moves into a driveway. We're just sliding the stairways forward and, and blocking in the area behind it. Now on the other side, on the ocean side, which is actually the, the east side, I believe, okay. the stairways now are in the front of the house and go out towards um, Houghton. And we're going to move the front stairway around to the side of the house to reduce that setback in the front yard on Houghton. So the stairways get moved around to the side, coming in from a side entry to the front of the house. Um, and then beyond that, we have the stairs that go to the second floor as you go back further on the line, of, of, on that side line. Uh, the stairway comes out right next to the existing bulkhead that's there. Uh, to allow access to the second floor. And because the house is so narrow and currently does not have a second floor, there's no interior stairway. So in order to put a stairway into the house to get to the second floor, you know, you don't want to defeat the process by putting it in the middle of the house and lose all your square footage to start with. So I thought that would be a very uh, a clean place to put it right next to the existing foundation of the bulkhead. So that, that, so that is the bulkhead that runs through? Yes. Okay. If you look at another picture that you have in your packet. Yeah, I sent see it there. Okay. It's this back picture right here that shows okay. the bulkhead. Yeah. And um, an interesting bulkhead in that it comes out and the bulk of steel bulkhead's on top of everything with a, an opening to go down through with a gateway. And all, we've, all we're talking about doing is just extend the bulkhead down and enclose that with the roof of the stairway. Mr. Chair, as long as you have it where it is, it's fairly difficult. Yes. I just checked one. Okay, thank you. <coughs> and this is a, you're in a sewer area, correct? Yes. And the, if you subtract the 30 foot on two sides and 15 on the other two sides, I think we're actually limited to a, to a 5 by 15 foot area of work without a, without a variance. So no matter what we do, we'd have to be in for a variance. And the foundation is going to stay exactly where it is on the side of Houghton and Greenwood, no change whatsoever. Um, and like I say, the stairs switch around to the side and the uh, um, Greenwood side it's exactly the same setback. <coughs> Carol, are there any letters on this? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first letter is from Theodore and Angela Meserve, 25 Houghton Street. We support the Carter's request to, to permit vertical expansion of their home on 52 Greenwood Ave. With non-conforming setbacks, we recommend you approve their request. Our home is in the corner of the Houghton and Greenwood facing the Carter's home. And the second one is the same. I really have no problem with the vertical expansion uh, whatsoever, but kind of the precedent that we've that we've gone by here in the past few years is that we don't allow a property to be more non-conforming. So going up is not a problem, but you're increasing the coverage from 27.74% to 31.15 and, and, and when the max is already at 25. So it's already above the, the max. And I, I understand the constraints that you have here, so I, I'm trying to I'm trying in my mind to, to figure out a way that this could happen without increasing the coverage of the lot because it's, when it becomes even more non-conforming, it's, it's really hard for us to approve. 
On the practical difficulties, one of the things the board can give a variance on is lock coverage. And it also can give a variance on any of the setbacks whatsoever on the property. The amount of increase that we're talking about in order to accommodate the second floor is very minimal, actually. Uh, the increase in lock coverage, I think, was uh, goes from 27 to 31 percent. Well, actually, almost 28 to 31 percent. I do recognize that as a concern. I've always recognized that when I bring things to the board. But under practical difficulty, we're allowed to look at that to see if the increase that we're actually looking for is a reasonable increase. In this case, the reasonable increase is for stairs, interior and exterior stairs primarily. That's what, the, that's what it is. It's not the building itself. It's not living area. We aren't try, trying to create more living area through an expansion of a, of a setback. I'm trying to get this to work in that would accommodate the second floor expansion and the stairs that are required to, to transition from grade to first floor, first floor to second. So I looked at this as being, yes, it's a request for an increase in lock coverage, but it's a minimal request not for any increase in room sizes or space. It's only for a transition from floor to floor with stairways. That's how I looked at it. So I don't think it's setting the precedent of increasing a, a, a square footage in order to increase the living space of a house per se. We're looking at uh, uh, mobility between floors. I mean, I do like that you move the front steps around to the side uh, rather than having them, uh, you know, having them uh, closer to the line there. So I, I certainly I can see that you've done your homework trying to do everything that you can to move this stuff around. I, I yes. Before I approve something like that, I've got to be able to justify it in my mind. Remind me again, with you, what on these these back stairs? Um, why that requires the entire width of the house? Um, like I say, the house is only 20 by 36. <coughs> Excuse me. And by moving the stairs forward and actually coming up the steps to a door instead of into the side of the house, it was able to create an, an, an opening passageway through the kitchen that where you just didn't come in from outdoors into the kitchen. Also in, in that, we had to have a place for the washer and dryer. And if you look at the floor plan, the stack washer and dryer is that little extension behind that, along the side of the house in that four-foot extension to accommodate the washer and dryer. It was the only place I could get it to go in the, in the bathroom. It's only a three-quarter bathroom with a shower, so it's not an overly sized bathroom. Um, it maintains that granite curb line that separates the house from the driveway, and it doesn't extend beyond that. So it doesn't affect anything as far as vehicles being parked in the driveway at all. And that driveway is a shared driveway between them and the abutter. So I didn't want to move into that driveway, and there was actually no other place to put the uh, washer and dryer and create a reasonable flow from the outside into the house without running that extension on the side. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Longstaff, any comments? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I think that the, you know, the, the issue of um, lot coverage it is, is an issue that can be dealt with in the practical difficulty variance, as Mr. Uh, Bolson has mentioned, um, under dimensional standards, these provisions of this ordinance, which relate to lot area, lot coverage, frontage, and setback, uh, that's under Section 6B1. So it does, it does allow you that flexibility if you deem that the applicant has made reasonable um, effort to limit any reduction in that building coverage. In this area, I would probably say that because it's not in the shoreline zone, it's not in the floodplain uh, or in a special flood hazard area, that um, you might view this as a reasonable accommodation, mm -hmm. as, as you mentioned, moving those front stairs around and not actually taking up any more um, impervious not creating any more impervious surface, even though that's not an issue because it's not in the shoreland zone. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think you could view it that way, should you choose to. Uh, I, I don't think that you would be in any danger of setting a dangerous precedent for the future in this particular case. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. How do we get around this, the uh, practical difficulty of uh, strict application? So, um, could you give me some more detail on your well, point? Going outside the square footage of 25 25 Certainly. Percent. Certainly. It does exceed 25%, but it started in uh, a higher number than the original 25% that we would be looking for. He did increase it almost another 3%, approximately, from 28 to 31. So that is true. It does violate what we usually sh use as our guideline, is a 25%. So the question for each individual board member will be, is that what trips it for you? I think that's what it will come down to. So I think it's a legitimate question. And I think it's fair to ask more questions because uh, it's the applicant's responsibility to do their due diligence and prove that there is no other alternative. So I think it'd be fair to ask any questions you feel would be suitable to get an answer that you need. What I'd like to do is take a moment, open up the public portion of the meeting. Could I, could sure, I, certainly. One, one, I, I think for me, um, I, I had an issue with it, but I think that after listening to Mr. Longstaff uh, explain to us that that is something that that uh, we can approve uh, without an issue, then I, I guess I'm okay with it, partly because um, the real purpose of this is really to go vertical. It's not. It's nearly not to, to, to expand. Correct. And, and the only way that they can go vertical is if they have stairs, and so that's. I guess that's the only reason that I am okay with that particular issue, and and I, I agree with your question on that, Marty, uh, Mr. Mrs. So that uh, I had an issue with that as well. Yeah, I agree with the statement. I think the solution is having stairs, and the only way you have stairs is to change the width. So I think that's their only alternative. But what I would like to do is what I'll do is I'll open up the meeting for the public. Anybody that wishes to speak. And I'll, I will come back to that. So I'm going to open up the public portion of the meeting. Anybody who would like to speak to this appeal can approach the uh, seeing none. We will close the public portion of the meeting. And again, we have the questions that we go through in this type of variance, and I think it may flush out some of these questions that may be out there. So um, there are seven questions to a practical difficulty appeal. The first one being the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. Uh, the building was constructed over 100 years ago on a corner lot. The zoning setback requirements that have been imposed on the property result in a buildable area of 5 foot by 15 foot. So the need to a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property. Okay. And what I'm going to do on this particular appeal, I'm going to go through each question, and we will approve each question as we go through it. And I'll be looking for comments from the board as they go. So on this first question, any questions or comments from the board? Before we start, could I ask a question? Yes, sir. Okay, so I think I ran into this before, that I had a question and didn't agree or voted no, but then at the end I voted yes. Yes, which you technically can't do. Which I can do. You cannot do. I can't if you If you answer no to one of these questions, your ultimate answer has to be no. Okay. I think the size of the property dictates this, so I'm not agreeing. I would agree with you. I'd have to agree with that. I agree with that. I'm going to agree as well. So all those in favor that we believe this portion of the variance is in agreement, that's five yes. The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. It will not have an unreasonable detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of, of abutting properties. Um, yes, I agree with that. And it's my belief that these proposed changes will result in a building that is also compatible with the evolving character at Higgins Beach as well. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I think uh, pretty much all the properties are undergoing some type of changes down there. And it is kind of a, an evolving thing, so yeah, yeah I, I think it probably fits right in. I like the design of it. So. I'd agree with that. In fact, I think it enhances everything that's happening down there and make the property values of the surrounding areas better. I would agree. 
I agree with. I'm in agreement as well. I think it does enhance the property values for everyone. All those in favor? It's five yes. The practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And the practical difficulty is the result of the current zoning restrictions that were placed on the property after the structure, structure was originally built. I'd agree with that. The hands are tied. I think all of these buildings down in the Higgins Beach area, mm -hmm. same, same situation. The, uh, they, they were built way before we had any zoning laws. That's correct. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm kind of on the fence with that one because there was a reconstruction, so I don't know if maybe some of this could have been addressed during the reconstruction, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure on that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a legitimate point, but now the structure stands as it is. Mr. Marcisa? The answer to the practical difficulty is not the result of the action taken by the athlete or prior owner. Mm -hmm. And then the, his answer makes, makes a lot of sense. Kind of have difficulty with it, but I'm going to go with the. See, it's if the town had an ordinance out and says this is what we want, they know all those houses down there were built before. So do they expect this? This an the answer to the question number three is always, oh, it was the uh, ordinance came after the house was built. Correct. It essentially grandfathers those houses that were built before. And it draws a line in the sand saying any properties after this point need to be so, constructed in So none of these should be taken out of a, the practice building building? Well, that's what because we... Because everything is grandfathered? Uh, except for anything constructed after the point that the ordinance was in place. It's a guideline for the new structures that go in. Okay. Well, that, that answers my difficulty with that, yeah. that part of it. So in this case, it's grandfathered, so it's kind of... A rubber stamp. Back to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, Mr. Longstaff, maybe you can help me on this, because um, basically the answer is result current zoning requirements that were placed on the property after the structure was originally built. My drawback on that is the renovation or reconstruction. Was this ordinance in place when that happened, and it's still or were the ordinances put in place after the reconstruction and renovation took place? Because that's where I'm struggling was this a result of the owner. When they redid the building, did they not do everything they could have to brought it up at that point, I guess, is my question. Um, I'm a little unclear on exactly what you're talking about, reconstruction. There was a foundation. There was a foundation. And a foundation which is placed under the existing structure where it's set, so it would not be reconstructed. And you couldn't move the building anyway at that point in time because of the restrictions no, of the I, I don't quite understand yep. your question. I, I mean, it was a it was more of a repair, I assume. Hmm. The renovate and remodel was, I guess, my question. Well, there was no remodel done. It was just the foundation work where that was put on. Where are you getting the renovate and remodel part? I'm, I'm not understanding what you're getting. That's what they want to do. That's what they're okay. doing now. All right, and I'm fine then. I apologize. No, I'd rather get the clarifications yeah. up yeah. front, so please keep asking the questions. Okay. So all those in favor in question three? That's five. No other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except a variance. In order to construct any improvements on the property, it would require a variance. Due to the limited lot size, the only feasible expansion of this project is to add in the second floor, along with minimal horizontal expansions to accommodate the internal and external stairs that are shown on the plans. So those little horizontal things primarily are for <coughs> circulation up and down, mm -hmm. with the exception as what was noted about the little extension in the back for the washer and dryer because there's no other place in the in the, in the floor plan. To put and because it. of the width of the structure, you can't right. go the opposite way with the stairs. It has it, to go in that direction. It's only 20 feet wide, and if you put a set of stairs in, it takes 11 foot of run, 4 foot wide, plus the space at top and bottom. Mm -hmm. it, it really, the best place to put it is the, the 
U-shaped stairway on that corner and extend extend out that four feet in the mm -hmm. side. Are there any other alternatives that you considered when you were looking at that? Yes. Uh, if you could go through those for us, just to yeah. Originally, when I first looked at it, I said the place to put the stairway may be on when you come up to the new side stairs and you got that little porch that's there. I was thinking of running up lengthwise on the side of the house. What would the effect have been there, and the downsides to that effect? The downsides, they would have lost the bedroom on the first floor. Okay. Okay. The the in-law uh, bedroom. Also on the second floor. I'm not going to say it's a loss, but it would have had to be a reconfiguration of the of the master bathroom type thing on the second floor. But mm -hmm. the primary thing was they would have lost that bat bedroom on the first floor, which they need for the elderly people when they come visit because they can't manipulate the stairs. Okay. What would that have done for the footprint? It would pretty much kept it the same way without that little bump out by the bulkhead, which yep. it wouldn't have needed. But it, it would severely impact that first floor and probably eliminate the bedroom. What else is on that first floor? Kitchen and living space, a uh, dining space, there's a, uh, a, a bathroom, three-quarter bathroom with the, the little laundry in it, okay. which is part of that four-foot extension on the side. How big is the dining area? if you did do what you were saying, you could eliminate the dining room and still have a bedroom down there? No, because the stairs would have gone up on this side and would have eliminated that bedroom. It would have made the dining room bigger, but you would have lost the bedroom. Mm -hmm. No, but what I'm saying is if you if you eliminated that bedroom, you could, you could have converted the dining room into a bedroom because they're about the same size. Am I not correct in that? That would have been a feasible alternative, correct? Well, Bedroom requires walls. Okay. The dining area is open to concept. There's no walls. So if you enclose it, we're going back to the thing and trying to get away with it, having all these cubicle rooms in there that uh, are too small. But it could be done, though. So I'm not going to say it couldn't be done. It could be done. Uh, so this is, the result, this is the result of the action taken by the applicant, then? No. By the first floor bedroom. I have a first floor bedroom. Well, I mean, you're requesting a bedroom. I on suppose the you, could, you could get to that conclusion if you. Yeah, I suppose you could get there. I'm not going to say you maybe couldn't. But I'm going to say that in order to get the need of the first floor bedroom accomplished, we can't put the stair there. The only place to typically put it would be right in here, which would require that four and a half foot bump out, which to that, that variance. Now, it's not asking for a whole lot of the variance as far as setback goes. I think the concern is here in the square footage thing, I think more than the setback, if I'm understanding you properly. Right? And what I'm saying is that in order to make a feasible layout inside the building, when a building is only 20 feet wide, you have to be able to accommodate somehow with getting the stairs to the first or second floor without messing up the first floor plan. Now, yeah, you can put walls in and cubicles in and put four little rooms that are all walled in, but that doesn't make any sense. You want to have, for the size of the building, you want to have a usable floor plan. And the only way to get to the usable floor plan, in my opinion, is by sticking that stairway on the side and wrapping it around so it doesn't... Uh, uh, inconvenience the flow of the inside of the house. I, I have no vote tonight, but I do have a comment. So <clears throat> I think that this is a, a bit of a slippery slope. I'm, I'm before I realize staircases are necessary to get a second floor, but if, if everybody wants everything, they're gonna obviously you're gonna just set a precedent of saying, okay, we can increase lot coverage to get a staircase. I just think that's a slope that everybody's going to cheat that square footage on already a lot that's already maxed out, that's beyond 
what's acceptable. <coughs> and you're asking for an increase in that, which doesn't sound like much, but yes. you know, three feet of 30 is 10 percent. I just think it's a slippery slope fall, but I think a staircase could be put in there. It would be a sacrifice. I don't have a vote, but I think it's one of those things where everybody's going to come forward and say, we want a second floor, and I'm all for that, but we need to bump out and exceed our already exceed our lot coverage, which is, you know, 25% is quite a bit of a lot. We know that the lot's been small, been purchased many times, knowing it's a small lot, lot of house. I just think it, it hasn't been exhausted. I think it's it's a it's a bonus, is what I think. I well, think if you, if you if you think it's going to open a slippery slope, I don't think it's a slippery slope to on, on a building of this size to say, in order to put a second store on, story on, you have to do a, something to accommodate the floor plan. If the house was 30 by 36, and I came in saying I need to have an extension for the stairway, I'd be saying, boy, I'm backing up the wrong tree on this. It couldn't happen. But this house is only 20 feet wide. And if you want to say it's going to open a, a, a slope up for 20-foot wide houses, it might, but it's not going to open a slope up for houses that are bigger than that. But I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a specific case here we're looking at. Then, you're, then what are you going to say? You're going to say houses, make a rule, houses 20 feet, greater than 20 feet, can work within the footprint, small, and I mean, you, then you, you know what I mean? It's going to be everybody standing at the podium saying that. I think 30 feet is too narrow to put a staircase in. Not part of you know, I know I, I just did a house on on Bayview, 20 feet wide, and there is a staircase mm -hmm. in there, and they've got a living room and a kitchen, and it works fine. It, what I'm saying is you're, you're, what you're asking, this is just my thought, you're asking for something above and beyond where I think it could be worked in, and that's only my opinion. Yeah. Well, I, I think on that house you did on Bayview, first of all, you couldn't come in with practical difficulty. It was in the flood lane and shoreland zoning, so you couldn't come in with a difficulty variance. On but this, on my, this my we're allowed to. The stairwell works in that house, yeah. and it is 20 feet wide. Yeah. Well, on, on this application, we're allowed to come in with a practical difficulty, which is, allows us to present our case I'm with not the even, stairwell. I'm not even a zoning issue. Yeah. I'm just saying that the staircase works in that house. It wasn't we asked for anything. The staircase just works in that 20-foot wide house. I, I just don't know if you've exhausted that possibility, and that's only my opinion, because I think then you're going to have everybody show up here saying, well, we do want to expand and go up, and I can see that. That makes sense. Add a couple bedrooms. The house has been with the house. The house is what it was when they bought it. It was a ranch, you know what I mean? And now it's going to be twice that ranch, which seems pretty good for that size lot. And then you, it just seems like you're just pushing the envelope on to me. That's all. Well, from when I first started with doing this, I think I've reduced the envelope down now quite a bit from when I first started that, trying to get it to work. Okay. I think it's going to have to work. So I think that the, the rule is 25, and you're already at 27, so back to expand it. Right. If I, if first thing I thought it was exhausted, that's all. If I thought that you had exhausted every possibility of getting a staircase in there, in my opinion, is you haven't. That's just my opinion. That's all. Okay. I, I think the debate is very good. I think it's good to p to get the point out. I think we've got it. Thank you. And what I, I want to bring us back to the original question. The, the question is, there are no other feasible alternatives, and I think that was the point of the board member, in that he doesn't believe that you've met the feasible alternatives question. So, And, and my stance is that I have, mm -hmm. based on what the the applicant wants to have on that first floor, which is that elderly bedroom, so they haven't got to go up and down the stairs. And it comes to a point that if I had to put the stairs on the inside of the house, that would get lost. Correct. But okay. the question that the so. board has to answer is whether we feel your application has met that feasibility question. Okay. So, and, and, and one and of the board members is saying he's questioning that, and we haven't gotten the responses from the other board members okay. yet, so we don't know how we stand I, on that I one. would add, like to ask. Certainly. And, and, and say one more thing. Sure. The question is no other feasible alternative to the, is available to the applicant except a variance. Irregardless of the stairway, I'd still have to be in here for a variance. Right. Okay. That's just a little small part of the whole variance of going to the second story. Yeah. And, and I'll just restate the, the 
reason for this question is that it's required of due diligence for the applicant to go through all the available options so that they present it to the board so they can make a reasonable decision that would hold up in court. So um, I'll, I'll go back to the questions by the board. I, I have just one question. Would it, would it not be feasible to bring those front stairs over and take up some of that porch? Well, to get right down to the reason why the stairs are there, if you look at the foundation plan, part of this house has a crawl space, and the back part has a full, well, a full cellar, a six foot four inches high, if I remember right down there. The outside bulkhead is the only way you get to that full cellar where it is. Very inconvenient in a year-round house in order to get down to your utility room and mechanics to go outside in the snowstorm and go down. So the reason the stairway is right next to the bulkhead, if you look on that proposed foundation plan, is so from the first floor you can circuit, go down the U-shaped stairway and come into that full section of the cellar. If I was moved the stairway to the front, like you're suggesting, <coughs> I'd be going down into a crawl space that's three foot high. No, I'm not, I'm so, not suggesting so. that. I'm, I'm talking about those front stairs that are that come up. You've got the that come up next to the living room. You've got a little porch there. Yep. Is it unfeasible to move those stairs in, even with the wall of the house, so that you don't have as much uh, lot coverage? And you would take up part of that porch. You really would probably end up with an unusable porch, but at yep. least it would leave the rest of the house intact. Uh, you, you oh, so you're saying take with that little five-foot porch where you just right. pull the stairs right in there. Right. That porch is only um, four feet by uh, five, four by about yeah, eight foot eight. eight. Yeah. And I would end up being saving half, about half, about uh, two and a half feet of that because of the of the uh, calculation square footage. So it's possible to get it in there. I'm not going to say it's not. It probably is possible to get the step in there. It it would be a um, step up to a like a three by four platform to a door going in. It would be about all it would be. You know. And it wouldn't it wouldn't save it would save some in square footage. Well, they say 32 feet. And what percentage of the? Well, what would that bring it down to? Well, we're over by 107. It will save 32. So you'd still be over by uh, 75 square feet, which would be about a third of that. So you'd be going from 31.5, probably down to 30.5, 30.15. So you'd be going from 28 to 30.15 of lot coverage. You'd still be over lot coverage. And like I say, the reason for the practical difficulty is to allow for um, a variance on the uh, lot coverage. And I don't think this lot coverage we're asking for is very much at all to, to accommodate stairways and so forth. No, we're, we're just trying to make sure I know there weren't are. any options out there that we're overlooking. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's, not, it's not saying that, that this can't go, it's just saying that we got to make sure that we look at all options possible. What would that do to your, to your landing size if you, if you did move that over? Well, you have to have at least a uh, uh, landing size of, uh, in this case, because with a door, it would be four by, four by three and a half. I think it's the minimal code. Okay, and that would make that about three feet wide. All right, so it wouldn't be big enough. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, that, that satisfies me on that. I, like I say, I, I, I'm just looking and trying to see every option on here that, that we've got. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Mr. Wilson's done his due diligence and prepared and looked at different options. Uh, yeah, I'm not very keen on increasing the size, but as Mr. Longstaff said, it's in our right to consider that in this particular appeal, um, and I'm inclined in favor of it at this point. Okay. Mr. Crockett? I would be opposed. I don't think, I don't think it's so much a want as opposed 
should be a need, not a want. And it's our job to make sure that we look at it that way. I understand what the applicant wants, but we need to address this to what the applicant needs. And I think there are other feasible alternatives. So I would say no on that. Okay. Mr. Marchesa? I'd be opposed to it too. I also think that there's, you could do something else. I mean, I, everybody would like to have a first floor bedroom. But, you know, the fact is we're going, these owners might not be going 6% over, but we have, it is 25%. It went to 27. Now it's 31. So I'm opposed to it on that. That's a good question. Mr. Stark? It's a tough question for me, but I think that I would uh, I would be okay with it, um, only because they it, it seems to me that they've looked at every option that's a feasible option. Option, and I agree. I I can see that you would have to do completely away with that bedroom um, because you're not going to get just, just the bedroom mm -hmm. could not be moved over and, and have a bedroom that actually works. Right. In my opinion, again, the question is there's no further, uh, no feasible alternative is available. <clears throat> I think you did your due diligence in showing that that's the best available option. I think it is pushing the envelope with percentages. I agree with that. I, but I, I think I agree also. I normally do not like <laughs> to go over that percentage. You know I've been here 50 times. <laughs> okay. But I will say it does say feasible alternative. There mm -hmm. may be an alternative, but it, it is not feasible as far as the applicant because of the restrictions that it would create within the building and right. ended up with a very feasible reduced down from what it was originally 250 square foot increase and I've reduced it down to this to get it so it would be a feasible act application. That's how I looked at it. Spiral staircase? <laughs> well, spiral case, staircase. I know the limits <laughs> of those. I'm sorry. Fire Marshall may not like that. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think Again, my opinion is that the applicant and, and the representative have done their due diligence on this, but you can see how it splits the board. So, I do. Um, it's a risk as we move forward. That, that, Mr. Chair, that was my direct question as to is there a feasible alternative, and the answer was yes, there is. I don't know how we can vote yes on that, where that it was answered yes, right. there is. I didn't say there was a feasible alternative. I said there's an alternative. I don't believe it's feasible, though for this owner for what they want, but there could be a feasible alternative for what the owner may not want, but what and they may need it on that unfeasible. <laughs> right. Understood. And that's why we all have individual votes. So, I understand the board member's comment. So, to question four, no other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except the variance. All those in favor? Three in favor. Two opposed. Next question, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Uh, the granting of the variance will not change the existing setback on Greenwood, will increase the setback on Houghton. Um, in the addition of the second story, we'll create a home that is more in character with the surrounding properties. The houses around the place across the street and to the sides are all two-story houses. Okay. The house directly behind this is a small little one-story on a very small lot. Uh, but all the other houses on both sides of the street, uh, across the streets, are all two-story in houses. Uh, so uh, it's going to be more in conformance to the character of those houses. Yes, sir. No, I would have to agree. Uh, looking at the plans and everything, I, I, I agree that it brings it more into conformance with the with the surrounding. I agree as well. I would agree with this. I agree with this. I agree as well. All those in favor? That's five in agreement. The granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. No. Gentlemen? Yeah, I see no change there. I believe that to be after it. I agree. I agree. I agree as well. All those in favor? That's five. And the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland area? No, it's not. Okay. So, 
the overall question is, does it pass? And we discussed earlier that if you had voted negative on one of them, then you have to vote negative overall. So, all those in favor? Oh, we have a motion. Thank you. I'll move to approve Appeal 2419 as presented. I'll second that. All those in favor? That's three in the affirmative, two in the negative. Passes with the majority. Good luck. Appeal this evening is Appeal 2420. Carol Yarmel, did I pronounce that correctly? Yarmel. Yarmel, thank you, of 19 Ocean Ave. It is a practical difficulty appeal, demolition of and reconstruction of the home five feet from Ocean Ave, 8.25 feet from the north side line, 13.07 feet from the south side line, in an R4 zone. Okay, Walter Welcome Wilson. back. Walter Wilson from the Sign <laughs> Company. Um, I'm re representing Carol Yermel in this application. Um, the property is improved a two-story resident built in 1900 in an re irregular shaped one-story addition that was more recently constructed, and I believe that was in 2004 or 2005. The existing structural lot coverage of 1,747 feet is 35% of the property. I was originally contacted by the owners to remove that existing extension in the back and renovate the house and remodel the house by adding a, an extension to the rear of the existing house that would occupy not greater than the square footage of that irregular shaped thing that goes to the back of the property. Uh, and then in so doing, we're going to put the second story over the addition and has all the bedrooms on the top floor. Um, as a matter of fact, in the packet, I believe I have a preliminary site plan I did in 13, 2013. And this just shows the existing building. And it was an example of what we could do to the rear of the building and extending over the front of the building. So we first initiated the, uh, the uh, process of trying to leave the first floor uh, existing building where it was and just take the uh, square footage from the addition, tear it down, and build a new addition. And as I proceeded to further investigate the scope of this work, <coughs> I became aware of several areas of concern that would provide uh, that needed solving regarding the structure uh, and integrity of the main building. Beginning with the foundation, which is the concrete block, that was installed around the prim perimeter enclosing an existing crawl space that was on post. When this was installed, it was simply enclosed the ground area in the house, left all the dirt ground right there, created a two and a half foot high uh, crawl space, and no concrete floor, and uh, there was a whole bunch of extra beams and supports that were added to try to get the house uh, held together and level off the floor. The footings of the columns that were added are not sufficient in size, and the concrete block that was added is not sufficient to take the weight of adding any more above the existing building because it's not built right. Um, and I got a note in here, irregardless if this is approved or not, that's something they should be have to take care of. Uh, the structure is two by four studs. Uh, part of the house is balloon framed. The floor joists are two by six, 24 on center. They're all sagging due to overextension of, of span dimensions. House has very little insulation, and uh, heating and uh, electrical need to be updone, uh, redone. The roof structure of the home also needs to be reframed. The second floor roof ridge shows signs of sagging on the second floor, and the first floor wraparound hip roof porches uh, that covered the original porch 
uh, need to be framed and, and replaced. They're all sagging. So because of all the extensive work that has to take place in this initial idea of, of saving the front building, uh, it, be, it became more feasible to tear it down and redo the whole thing. Um, the existing building is 31 foot wide on a 50 foot lot. Our proposal is make it 26 foot wide on the new one so we can reduce the setbacks on both sides. We're also going to move the house in further off of Ocean Street than what's currently there. And the resulting lot coverage, uh, it reduces it from 33.1 to, I'm uh, um, 35.1 to 33.6. So we do have a slight reduction here. The biggest thing on this on this application is we're going to be reducing those setbacks and opening the lot up. And you can tell by that site plan of the existing building. When you drive in the driveway, you can't even get around to the back of the house because the extension is only six feet from the property line. Uh, you'd be walking on somebody else's property to go around to the back of the house. So the idea is to square the building up more, bring it all in so it's more usable space around the house give more open space between the abutters, which they probably appreciate also. Um, <coughs> so this would be, would be an application for a complete teardown and a rebuild. Um, the setbacks that we're going to be looking at for reduction is front yard right now there's zero because the stairs go out into the, into the street. And we're going to set the building back so that the roof overhang would be five feet from the front street, so we need a variance of 25 feet on the front. And like I say right now, there's, there's, there's no setback. The left side is required 15 feet. The existing is approximately six feet. We're going to increase it to 8.25, so we need a variance on the left side of 6.75 feet. On the right side, you required 15 feet. Right now, it's 0.5 feet. We're going to propose 13.07 feet, so we need the variance of 1.93 feet on the right side. And on the rear, we have no problem with the setbacks. And like I say, the lock coverage is reduced from uh, 35 down to 33.5. And so, um, and like we've talked about in the previous application. This this building has, is over the 25%, but it is grandfathered at that 35.08, and we are making a reduction uh, of, of a small amount, but it is a reduction, um, and utilizing the square footage of, that's already on the property and not increasing it any larger, just rearranging it to make a better shape of a house. There is a picture in there an old picture from the 50s that show this wraparound porch coming all the way around the sides. Currently, if you look at this picture, you'll see that's been filled in on both sides. Those are actually two bedrooms on the first floor. They're seven and a half feet wide. The only other bedroom in the house is up on the top floor, which was originally the old sleeping loft of the cottage. Um, this whole section in the middle is all balloon framed. And I understand and, and from looking at it maybe why the applicant, uh, the owner prior put the addition to the back. He realized this couldn't hold up any more weight and structure, so they went to the back and did it instead. Okay? That might have solved his immediate problem. It didn't solve the problem of the building. And uh, the only way to solve the building problem, in our opinion right now, is feasibly to tear it down and build a new one. Like you got kind of a small building envelope. Yes, we do. <laughs> so what's that about? It's less than right around 20 feet wide by about uh, 35 or something. I believe so. Yes. So it's really not a buildable. I I like what you've done as far as uh, reducing the setbacks uh, and reducing uh, the footprint. So I'm, at this point, I don't have any questions until we get into the. Okay. Any other questions from the board? I'm going to open up the public portion of the meeting. Ask if anybody from the public would like to speak to this. Please approach the podium. Uh, you need to approach the podium and state your name. Thank you. Yes, 
My name is Alwyn Pinard, a uh, 17 Ocean Avenue, and I had a couple of questions. <coughs> Excuse me. One was the uh, front setback. Presently, the uh, stairs are right at the property line, front part of the property line. And they're actually in the street. Okay. Well, look, looking at the uh, survey map, <coughs> it, appear, it appears to be at the, at the mark. But, and the, and the porch is about five feet back. So, is the, the existing porch sits back four feet okay. on the corner? Mm -hmm. So, and if this is a six five here. Five foot five. Five. Okay. And what is that going to be? Going to go to the building's going to be set back to two point two five feet to six point two five, and the stairs are going to pull, be pulled in six point two five feet from the property line. Yes. My, I really don't have any uh, uh, great problems with this. It is an improvement. Uh, so these are really questions. So c could you answer? Actually, could you address the questions to the board, okay. please, and then right. we'll, Certainly. no problem. <laughs> uh, the present, putting aside the, uh, the former garage, which is, was tied into the house. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. From on the seaside, the present, set aside is like 12 or 13 feet. I'd like to know what the present is versus their your proposed 1307. Okay, currently the application says that it's half a foot from the side. Okay, well I, I, take yep. I take exception to that. Okay. okay. But, okay. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, I'll let you address. Go right ahead. That garage is actually one and a half feet from the sideline, but it has a put overhang, so the setback is six inches. Okay. And did you verify that by pins? Yeah, on the, on the survey. Yes. Okay. On the um, existing corner of the building, it's 11 feet from the property line to mm -hmm. the corner of the building at the driveway. Okay. It's going to be 14.32 feet to the building. Done, so we're going to be moving over over three feet. That including the overhang. We have the overhang, which reduces to the third mm -hmm. point. Sorry, okay. thank you. Okay, so he's looking at it from where the building stands. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get it. Yeah. Right now, the building's 11 feet wide. Yeah, I see that. And thank we're you. going to make it 14.3. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's an improvement. Yeah. But I, I do take exception to the to the, uh, the six inch because up to 10 years ago, that was a standalone garage. And over the winter, and this this upsets me, I came up, and much to my surprise, it was, uh, as far as I'm concerned, non-conforming construction tied that into the house. So that I, I took exception to that. Are you saying that wasn't t it was not tied into the house before? No. Until 10 years ago, it was not tied into the house. It was nine feet, and that L, you can show them, the L, the L okay. Um, I think that leaves six feet was constructed within the within that fifteen foot setback. Okay. So I found that upsetting. So Okay. So the the original square footage was basically the small cottage you were talking about. Up to ten years ago. Okay. So that's basically uh, my my concerns, my questions. Okay. Thank you. And, but I do have a question of the board. How does the fact that this coverage, which is presently 35.1, mm -hmm. was get gathered or, or achieved through tying in with a non-conforming cons construction? Could you ask the question one more time, please? Um, what is the, can I ask the board, what is the square footage of present uh, old uh, construction? That's less than 10 years old. It's older than that. What what is that percentage? Okay. According to the application, the existing is 35.1 percent okay. as it stands today. As it stands today. Yes. Now, what it was 10 years ago before the connection occurred, I, I don't know. And and let me ask the town: Do we have record of any changes to the property? I did not review for any changes. Okay. The the I believe the file indicated there was permits issued for the construction that occurred. 
Okay. I just cannot verify that. It's okay. I don't okay. Have that done. Okay. I can check the file and report back. And how long have the owners been owners of this property? The present owners. Less than two years. Yeah. They so bought it last summer. This would have been a prior owner? This is a prior owner whose name now escapes me. But it was basically 2004 when the property changed. Okay. And, and downstairs in your records, uh, is the, your folder, shows in pen a drawing in of what was done. And I, my contention was it was, I, I complained to the board, I mean, not the board, excuse me, the building inspector, mm -hmm. but uh, they said that was uh, conforming, but I didn't agree. Okay. Yeah. And again, we don't have the record of the I understand. previous so change. So the question, so how does that affect? The present is 35.1. 35.1, correct. And they're proposing a 33.6, which is an improvement office, obviously. Lower. Correct. Correct. But the question is, how how does the the, the uh, construction of <coughs> 10 years ago, which increased the square footage? As it tied in the garage and made it a bedroom, and there's also an L shape that I, I assume is just a passageway, mm -hmm. which affected the square footage and upped it from maybe 25, 20, or 30 percent. So those are my questions. Yes, and and I'll do my best to answer your question. Whether that was a legal or not legal modification, we don't have record of that right now to answer okay. that question. But. I don't have an objection, per se, to the uh, proposal. I think it's an improvement of what exists there now, even though I object to how it was arrived at. How, how they got there before this owner got yes. the property. Okay. Thank you. Well noted. Mr. Chair? Yes. Should we go back to the town for confirmation of that, if it exceeds the 25% and brings it to 30 to make sure that was done le legitimately and make sure we have records of that before we vote on that? Well, the, the one question that talks about um, the practical difficulty is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner, which is the third question. Um, the practical difficulty in this case, I think, is independent to what the current square footage is because that's not part of this difficulty. It is part of the percentage that they sit with today at 35%. But that out of compliance is not really what's in question here. It's the variance that we're reducing or changing from that. So how we got there, in my opinion, is not critical to whether we approve or disapprove this. I, I guess my question, maybe I <coughs> rephrase it, but if the garage was attached, and that brought it above the 20, say before it was sitting there, it was at the 25% mm -hmm. level of the requirement. Mm -hmm. I, I recognize that it's being reduced down now to be more in conformity. Right. But if that was attached and brought it outside of the conformity where it was in conformity before, even though we're reducing it, we're not rebuilding the house as it set, would be my understanding if that wasn't part of it before because it was a detached structure. I understand what, you, what you're saying, but I think it's kind of like water under the bridge type of thing. But knowing what you're saying, we can say we can say tear it down, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to tear it down, and so we're going to tell them, now oh, we we would agree with 33 percent, which is eight percent over 25. But we know the obstacles that we have in front of us. And and again, the, the way I'm looking at this is. It says this owner or prior owners. Understand that that question is like that, but I'm trying to treat this case as if it's these owners. And whether they had knowledge of a previous inequity, and I don't think they did. And again, that's my feeling. Could I uh, put a little input into this? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, may I close the public meeting? Thank you for speaking. Now we're back to the board. and. That structure in the back evidently was a the old-fashioned garage at one time. And I believe the house next door also has a similar garage in the back corner, if I remember right. Okay? Yeah. 
the extension that went from the house out to the garage, and I'm not trying to say this is exactly what it is, but if you look at the site plan, you'll see it's within the 15-foot setbacks. So it didn't require a zoning board approval because it met the setbacks. We're not the, in the public the meeting right exist, now. So the existing I garage under Scarborough ordinances, if you've got a structure with a roof over it, you can update it on the inside without getting a variance is what they did. Did they go further than maybe they should have? I don't know. I checked with the town when we first got this. I called up to see if it had ZBA approval in the past. There was no record of it. And then I got looking at it closer, and I'm saying, well, there's probably no record of it because there was no need to go to the ZBA in the first place because of the way the configuration was. So I'm, in, I'm saying it had to have been an application for a building per permit that did not require ZBA approval. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way it uh, went through. But they should have still gotten a building permit to make a modification to the structure. Uh, I'm assuming they had. Right. I don't know if they did. Right. But if it went above 25%, they'd have to come to the zone board, wouldn't they? I, I would think I, so. I, you know. But I, again, the planning board would have had to pick that up. Right. Somebody, somebody at the town office. Right, right. Out. And, and irregardless of what the whole situation, how it came about, it is there. Well, it's right, right. Except right, by right, the right. town, they do right. pay taxes on it. You got right. a number of years ago right. by, so it's pretty non revocable. Right. Okay. <laughs> if, if I could pause for a moment, I'm going to open the public meeting again. If the gentleman would like to speak, if you'd step up to the podium, you may have some information historically that would be beneficial to the board. Again, my, my objection is not to the building as proposed by Mr. Wilson, okay? It's to the description of it and how it affects the board. And the garage was originally nine by nine because that was what was in the town records. I don't know what your drawing shows, but it was basically nine by nine. Mm -hmm. The setback is half a foot. So between nine and a half to the 15 foot, that, which that L extends, that passageway extends under, was um, against what was uh, non-conforming, non that's all. So I, I take exception to Mr. Wilson's comment that it wasn't exception. Duly noted. Thank you. We're going to close the public meeting again. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of what the original size of the garage is. You know, it could have been 9-9, nine, nine, it could have been 16-by-16. Yeah. 16 16. I, I appreciate the feedback, though. Thank you. No, I, I think it, I, I see what they're both talking about here, but I think that we're talking about the connector. And, and, and you're right, the connector is within the envelope, the, within the building envelope. So um, if a permit was issued, they may have just not scrutinized the coverage. And, and it would have, would have fit real well if it, if, it, if, it, if it didn't have a problem with the coverage. I think today what we have to deal with is what is here. And the fact of the matter is we're bringing it smaller than it is currently. And you know what, what's happened ten years ago. We don't really don't have a whole lot of lot that we can do about that. But uh, but we can make sure that we're not expanding. Uh, and the, the fact is that you're also reducing the setbacks here, uh, in less less nonconforming. So. Um, and I think to, to add to Mr. Done. Mr. Crockett's comment, I think it's a very good point. If there were a point where I felt we needed more information, then I would duly table this. Yeah. to get that information, but I think in this particular case, I'm okay to move forward without that additional information because it's, it's a, I don't want to call it a previous sin, but it's, it's been there, and it's, and it's out there. It's been out there roughly 10 years. So at this point, I feel that it, that it falls underneath the umbrella <coughs> of grandfather, and now we're looking at the structure where it sits today versus where they want to take it tomorrow. So that's how I'm approaching this. And uh, Mar Mr. Marcus, are you okay with that? Um, yes. Mr. Richard. Okay. Mr. Chair, could I just ask, can we just get Mr. Longstaff to Certainly. chime Mr. in Longstaff, on that? Can I get your okay comment? with us really not knowing how it occurred and if it doesn't really affect us going forward? I believe there, there could have, there's a possibility that an error could have been made, but I don't believe in checking the file. I saw any notice of violation on file. Um, so if an error was made, the applicant relied on the um, action of the town at the time in, in approving that structure that connected the two, mainly because, as somebody already mentioned, it occurred in the buildable envelope that existed. So 
it wasn't scrutinized as it would have probably been had it been proposed to be outside of that building. As well. It's not an excuse. It's probably what happened. It's I, I can only surmise. Um, uh, I think that the board can certainly. You, you could go either way with that. You certainly have a right to table it pending further investigation if you feel that it warrants that. If you don't feel that it's important enough at this point and that you're basing your opinion on or your feelings on the fact that we're heading in the right direction uh, with regard to lot coverage, we're reducing that. I think you're on solid footing there as well. Thank you. Does that help you? Yeah, I, well, I like the fact that we're reducing it. I just want to make sure that we're covering all the bases for the town here, not really knowing how that occurred because if the bit and like you're saying, if the building envelope was set, yeah, and it was it was approved. I mean, yeah, I, I what, think we're, what are we going to do? I mean, I think we're on good legal you're footing. Off, if I said, you're, you're operating on the information that you have in front of you. If you feel that's adequate to move forward, you you may. If you don't feel that you have enough information in front of you, you can table it. I can't promise you that any new information is going to going to materialize. Yeah. Um, you, and in the practical difficulty, again, as, as Mr. Wilson already pointed out in the last field, lot area is within your purview, building area is yeah. within your purview. Thank you. And again, I feel comfortable moving forward. I think we have a good legal basis to move forward. Yeah. If you feel uncomfortable with that, then, then please let us know and uh, we'll discuss it. But I think we're okay to move forward. Do you need further discussion? No, I think if the town is <coughs> okay with us moving forward, then I'm okay with it. Yeah. I just, I just want to make sure that we're yeah. covering the bases. So yep. No, thank you. I think we can proceed. All right. Uh, if we'd like to move forward and go through the questions for a practical difficulty, we've been through there through them before, and if you would please uh, state your opinion to the record, I'd appreciate that. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition in the neighborhood. Can I ask one question? First? Certainly, please. Are we doing this vote one by we one? We will do that again. One by one? Yeah, okay. we'll do it one question at a time. Uh, okay. The overall width of the existing building is 33 feet, including the roof overhangs on a 50-foot wide lot. Combined with the structural deterioration of the main house and the inadequate foundation results in a need for a variance to either fix the existing conditions or remove the existing building and construct a new home. This proposal is the latter solution. If approved, it will result in the owner being able to remove an aging structure and replace it with a code-compliant building with increased yard setbacks on all four sides of the property. Mr. Stark, I'll start with you. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, I think as we've already discussed, uh, it, it certainly is a unique, uh, a unique building shape, and I think this brings it more into conformance uh, in a lot of different ways. Uh, so I, I think I'm good with it. I agree with Mr. Stark's comments. I would agree. Mr. Marchese. I agree. I'm also in agreement, but I also want to add that, um, again, the circumstances around this is the building envelope, and we're seeing an issue with uh, several areas in town where building envelopes are extremely small based on uh, the existing ordinance, and I can tell you that in the future that there is a committee that's looking at some of these issues and some of these problem areas that we have, Higgins Beach and Pine Point are two good examples. So there is... Um, some review that's going on in the existing ordinance, and there may be changes that come within the next short uh, future. So um, under this circumstance, we do have an issue here, and I don't think it's a problem created by you. It's a circumstance that's created by this ordinance. So. It would be nice to see if uh, something did come through in regards to those issues you just yeah. talked about to make yeah. a change. We should know more make within... We should, we should know more. It, it will make it easier on our board as well. Uh, we should know more within the next few months. It's in, I can tell you there are things behind the scenes going on now, and I don't have a lot of detail around it, but I know there are things in motion, so uh, we should That's know good. more. Uh, item two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonable detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the budding properties. 
I agree with that. Oh, sorry, did I not vote? Yes. Oh, you did not vote. <laughs> sorry, folks. My bad. Um, all those in favor of question one? Five, yes. Right. Question two. Okay. I agree with the, uh, the question, and I would also say, although the style of the proposed home is different from the existing building, it is similar to and in character with the homes that are being remodeled and reconstructed currently at Higgins Beach. If this project is approved, the increase in side yard setbacks will be a positive improvement to, to the use and value of the abutting properties as well as to the applicants. I would certainly have to agree with that. I agree with that as well. I would agree. I agree with that. I'm in agreement as well. All those in favor in question two? That's five. Question three, the practical difficulty is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. You got to say it. Go ahead. This paragraph, I, have, I, I don't even change it. I guess from application <laughs> to application, the practical difficulty result of the current zoning requirements that were placed on the property after the structure was originally built. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I totally understand what uh, a couple of our members were questioning there, but I think that uh, because of the situation on this property, I, I would have to agree that uh, there's really not. The size of the lot and, the, and everything, and no, I, I think we're good. I agree as well. <laughs> I don't know. Can I abstain? I don't really know. No, I won't allow Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> that's a tough one for me to answer, not really having all the information. I know we can proceed without it, but really mm -hmm. not having all the information, I really. Vote with what your gut tells you to do. <laughs> I, I would say. Addressing the concerns of the neighbors, I would say probably no on that. Okay. I, I would agree with it. You agree? Oh, that was him, but, <laughs> <laughs> but the practical difficulty is well, kind okay. of zoning. And this is the one that I hope that the town is looking at because this is the big stumbling block, it seems to be. I'm sure it's one of the things that's going to be addressed in, yeah. in these ordinances. So, um, again, I, I agree that I think you, the applicant meets. But I do want to keep stressing that we are here to make a legal decision and that I encourage all board members to question when they don't feel that it passes the smell test or the straight face test. I continue to ask you guys to put your feelings out there and your questions out there because that's what makes us a viable, trustworthy board. If we say yes to everything, no one will believe us. So continue questioning. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Keep doing what we're doing. I am in agreement. So all in favor on question three. That's four in favor and one negative. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except for a variance. We are on, um, this is question four. Um, in order to construct any improvements to the existing buildings or to remove the existing structure and build a new home, a variance would be required. Due to the structural problems of the existing building, the only feasible alternative that is economically practical to the owner is to remove the existing building and to construct a new home as per this proposal, which will reduce the setbacks on the sides and the front and make it more compatible with the area. Yeah, I, I would certainly have to agree. It, it makes no sense, uh, the age of these older buildings, uh, to, to go in and try to patch them up. Uh, it, it would be almost impossible to bring them into compliance with current standards and uh, get the insulation and everything else. Uh, I, I, I would have to agree with it. I agree with that as well. On this one, I, I do agree because we're basically tearing it down and rebuilding it, and the only way to do that is a variance because it's already outside of the footprint guidelines. So. I also agree that that's the feasible way to go. I agree as well, especially since it reduces on all sides. So it benefits us to do that. And I do applaud the fact that it is being reduced. Yes. So all those in favor on question four? That's five in the positive. Question five, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly in conformance with the surrounding properties. Yeah, the granting of the variance request will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly in conformance with the surrounding properties. This proposal will increase the building setback from the existing building on both uh, side yards as well as the front yard. I totally agree. Yeah. I agree as well. I would agree. Uh, 
the houses to the north and south, whether, whether it be on two sides, are they uh, as close to the front? Yes, the, uh, as a matter of fact, they are. Um, well, that's the compliance I was looking for. The house to the left side, yes. they're eight feet from the property line. And the from, house the front, of, from the front from line. The front, front property okay. line. Yeah. And the house over here will be right in line with so it's the new proposal. So it's in conformity, and that's what I was looking for. Okay. I agree the applicant has proven it. All those in favor with question six, uh, excuse right. me, five. That's five in, in the positive. Question six, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. No. Start with you, Mr. Marcus. No, obviously. All right. No, I, I agree. I agree with that. I agree. I'm in agreement as well. All those in favor? Five to the positive. And seven, the property is not located in, the, in whole or in part in the shoreline zone? No, it is not. Okay, so it doesn't apply. So, on an overall, uh, well, do I have a motion, question, comments? I have a comment. Yes, sir. I'd like to applaud the uh, neighbor from coming up. He brought something up that no one was uh, aware of, the building inspector. And anybody that's watching this uh, at home, if they do get a letter or someone's doing something close to them, Come to the meeting. Voice your opinion. Thank you. I, I think I would reiterate that one more step further. And if you see something that you may question, um, get to the town as soon as you can, because there may be certain time that goes by where that may end up being grandfathered and we have no recourse of action. So if you do see something that you have a question on, ask a question when it happens. Okay. Move to approve Appeal 2420 as presented. Right, second. All those in favor? That's four to the affirmative and one to the negative. Passes. Thank you Thank very you. much. Chairman. Yes, sir. In the name of consistency, I just want to put on record there were no letters or false Thank you. Consistency. No, what he means is in doing your job the way you should be doing it. But he didn't want to come out and say that. But I can take it. Sorry, Mr. Longstaff, I can take it. That was not what I meant at sure, all. Sure, sure. I would have said it if he didn't. Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> somebody's got to be honest up here. <laughs> and the, fi the final appeal for the evening is appeal number 2421, David and Karen Fillinger. Did I get yes. that correct? Yes. Of 10 Pearl Street. Uh, it's a variance appeal. They want to split splitting of one non-conforming lot into two non-conforming lots, which had been merged as a contiguous lot under the same ownership. And if you could state your name. Uh, my name is David Fillinger. My wife, Karen, okay. is right here in front of me. Uh, yeah, if you could explain your appeal to us. Yeah, we're, we're trying to re-separate lots 69 and 70. I guess if you start, if you look at page 15 of the uh, what I attached, it's from the original Higgins Beach plan, and it shows essentially the lots, including lot 70, oh, yeah. because, you know, building moved to lot 19, so there was a house, separate house on that lot to begin with, I think, is the issue. So we're really trying to go back to, I'm not sure where or when it became one lot, but that our, our goal is to try to go back down to get two separate lots that we can build on. Right now, the lots... Lot 69 has a current coverage of about 1,950 square feet. So the, essentially the additional lot that's empty has, you know, 550 square feet left to use based on the other lot. And that's all, that, that wasn't added on. That's, you can see there's pictures that, that show the, pages 8, 9, and 10, I think, show pictures of the, the existing house and the house that was there next to it on page 9. And then the, the next page is just that house by itself. So this this lot has was intended to be a house lot, had a house on it, and at some point has gotten lumped in to be taxed as a single lot. So we're trying to switch it back. Now you realize the difficulty in this appeal is that we can't take a non-conforming lot and make it a conforming lot. Uh, a, excuse me, a conforming lot and make it a non-conforming lot. 
Well, where's the, 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 the what's the thank you? What, where's the conforming lot? Because the lot that I have now is you know the houses are it's too close to the street. It's not conforming as it is. But there were two separate lots that were both by the town set up by the town as conforming lots. That's how they were approved. Right. Right now you have a call it a double lot. Yes. That in the eyes of a of the town is considered a single lot. What you're asking us to do is to allow you to split it in two to build a, another structure on that second part of that lot. We will not, we don't have the power to split that lot and say, yeah, you can make two non-conforming lots. No, I guess the question is, is that where is it determined that it was one lot? It was approved by the town as two lots. It shows as two lots. It shows in the history of the town as two lots. Mm -hmm. It has two houses on it. They were taxed separately as two lots. That somewhere along the line, the town like grandfathered it out doesn't seem to be a reason. I'm not asking you to recreate no, no, a non-conforming lot. I'm asking you to... When did the second building come off? That I don't know when it came off, but it, it would have been before the zoning. It would have been years ago. Actually, and, the guy and did that owner own both properties at that time? That I don't know. Actually, the house was moved over to Hoden Street, so I, I don't think so. Okay. I think the, the building at the time was owned by two separate people. That lot was moved. It shows on the original plan that it was moved over. It's, it's called the Nugget 2 now on the other side. And you bought, you have both lots now? I have both lots now. That's when it became a single lot. As soon as two side-by-side -side lots of non-conformance are owned by one property owner, as soon as you purchase that property, but that became one But why was it non-conforming? Like when lot 69 and lot 70 were both conforming right, lots. Right. The, the only way they became non-conforming is when the ordinance went in place. But those were already, it was already a lot at that point, I guess, is the question. So Correct. If, if it's so it was, quote-unquote, kind of grandfathered until you took that building off the second lot. Then both of those lots become one. But, again, under what criteria does that happen? That doesn't mean, the, the, it, the, again, going through the, the questions, I'm looking at a history that says there's two separate lots here. The, I show by the town's own, you know, the, it's their written own in registry the, of it, deeds, it, they've got it in as two separate lots. It's written in the ordinance. It's it's written in the town's ordinance. Thank you. Under section 2D67, with conformity, it says if two or more lots of record in continuous frontage, they're sharing frontage, any of which does not meet the requirement for lot width, and they don't, under the current code, in the areas established by this ordinance, are in a single or common ownership, which now it is, at the effective date of adoption or amendment to this ordinance or any other time thereafter, such lots shall be considered to be a single lot for the purpose of the ordinance. So once that building went off, it really is considered one lot under the way the ordinance is written. Right. But again, I, I guess the, the, the piece is then, if it's a, if it's a non-buildable lot, it's being taxed at... Uh, there's there's non-buildable lots right around the corner that are taxed at twenty or thirty dollars a piece. Yeah, but so if this is a non-buildable lot, then why is it being taxed? As it's a, not. You have one contiguous lot now. Right, but the exist because of the, when it was set separately, lot sixty-nine. That structure crea is using two thousand square feet of it. So now there's a new lot that's non-conforming, mm -hmm. has no room left to add on it. So the, really, the only way to make a reasonable return is to knock the whole thing down and build a new house. Which, well, that's a different... Which I can't afford to do. Well, that's so. a different question. You had every, you would have every right to do that. But we as a board don't have a right to split these into two lots and allow you to build two structures on it. We can't do that. Well, I guess that my understanding was in coming to talk to the guys at the town was that that was an option, that if, if we go through the, the hardship case that, that it can get re-split up. That's why we're here, I guess. Yeah. There is... There's no way. May I jump in? Yeah, please. Um... We could allow you to build an accessory apartment sure. attached to the other building, but the, the, the zone that this is currently in, and that zoning, as Mr. Chairman just spoke about right. a little bit ago, is probably going to change in the near future, but the current zoning requires a hundred feet of frontage to be one lot. This is now a conforming lot, one conforming lot. 
So what what he's saying, what, what Mr. Laysell is saying, is that we cannot split one conforming lot and make two non-conforming lots out of that. We're, that's one thing that we just can't do. Now that may change, and those it may may get to a day where where the where with new zoning where it only requires a 50-foot frontage. But today, we can't, we're not allowed to, to, to split that up. And if we were allowed to, we would not be allowed to let you build a new home on a, a spare lot because on a lot that is not conforming. Because a, a building that's already there, we can allow you to make changes to that building, but we can't allow you to put a new building in a non-conforming lot. Because of the 50-foot frontage. That Correct. Right. right. Again, the, the, the history is, the, and that's really the only house on the street that's conforming, I guess is what we're saying. Literally the only house only, on the only street. Only lot, yes. Yes, yeah. So, I mean, that just doesn't seem like a reasonable, I mean, I mean, I've lived in the town for 15 years, but it doesn't, there's a reasonable part of, you have one conforming lot in the entire neighborhood, and it was two lots, and it had two houses on it, and at some point it got switched over, and I don't know when it was owned by the same person. We bought it that way, but I don't, we bought it as you know, a house that had two lots. I don't know that we yeah. knew that if, it was never splittable. But. If that still had another house on it, we could allow you to make changes to that house. We could right. allow you to tear it down and rebuild it. But once that house is removed before a permit is issued, and obviously it's been way before, right. we're not allowed to, to let you build something back on oh, that lot. Right. We literally don't have the legal right to do that. Who, who does? It should be. No one. No one. It, 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 it has to go to the planning board. If this were rezoned and they are working on zoning, then it could happen. But because of the zoning, because it's only a, a 50 foot, it's not. It's a non-conforming at this I time. Yep. I understand that. But this now, like I m mentioned in the previous application, the ordinances are going under review, and you could go to the committee that's doing that and discuss how you believe you would like to see that ordinance come about. That is an option that you have. Yeah, well, it just it just seems like to grandfather it out doesn't seem like a reasonable place. I know the town did the zoning now, but again, it's there's 15 or 20 lots all right in a row that have, I mean, literally by the fact that they moved that house by without knowing that it was going to create a problem, have eliminated the option. Right. But but just tax wise, is that if that's if the case is the town's looking at it that way, then it doesn't justify if it's a single lot then. It, there's some way of like, how do you justify charging for, you know, five grand for the yard that I can't use essentially? Well, I think what you could do is you could approach the town's tax department and say, look, this is one large lot. You're taxing taxing it as if it's two different properties, and it's not. I think you have a legitimate discussion with them about taxation. Yeah, you've got, you can you could kind of look and see. We're basically paying, you know, we pay another four or five grand compared to anybody else on the street. And it's, you know, we have a, the yard, but it's not like it's just, it's a lot to pay for the yard, essentially, if it's never got a chance to build on. And because of the existing house and that structure, which has been there for 100 years, uses yeah. up most of the 2,500 square feet that yeah. you'd be able to use I, I, anyway. I agree with you. I, I agree with you, but I, uh, I think the chairman hit the nail on the head. You, you got to go to that planning board. They'll listen to you. Yeah, it only makes sense. Yeah, we, we don't we don't have any legal basis to make that decision. Doing it. Well, when we're in, like, how, how do I get in contact with them? I guess part of it is I went to code enforcement and talked to several people in there, which gave me the impression that you do have the ability to to not to, to create a non-conforming lot, right. but to what what they probably said is we have the ability to hear your appeal. Well, that's may, maybe, but I think that the, the and, and we do the, have the ability to hear this appeal, but we don't have any legal judgment to change the ordinance. The ordinance stands the way it is, and we can't change that, and we can't approve it based on the way the ordinance is written. But what you can do, there's a couple, you have a couple options. Yep. First option, if you are not looking at splitting them off and you're just looking at gaining more space, an accessory unit could be added to the property right. legally, and you get plenty of billing envelope to do that. Yeah, right. If you're looking at splitting them because you want to make two properties out, we don't have that ability. You could go to, again, the planning group and talk to the group that, and figure out who's doing the ordinance committee. Is there a contact for that, or I don't know if there's somebody else? I, I, I think if you go to Mr. Bacon at the planning department. If I could. No, oh, please. Jack, I don't think going to the planning board is, is a solution. Okay. The ability to make a decision on this does rest with the board, but there has to be but the applicant has to demonstrate that there is undue hardship here, that there is no reasonable return on the property. 
that's what's impossible in, in my opinion. Yeah. I have no vote, no say. Right. In my opinion, it is impossible to prove no reasonable return on this property. Right. That's why you can't theoretically cannot approve it. You can hear it, and you do have the right, if you are convinced that there is no reasonable return, and that they have demonstrated that, mm -hmm. you could grant them that. It could be challenged in, in a court of law. Um, I don't know what the precedent would be, but there is no relief to be gained by going to the planning board. So, so the relief is, is really back here. The, the I, don't want to, I don't want you to go down a road no, no, in a different direction. It's just going to waste your time. But this is... But I hear you saying that the board does have the right to make a decision. They have a right to make a decision. You must demonstrate that there is no reasonable return on this property but for they approve that plot split. Right. I challenge, again, I have no say, no vote. I challenge you to demonstrate that to, to their satisfaction. That's your, that's your when, I, when I was saying going to the planning department, it's not to try and get approval. It's to talk about the ordinance change that may be coming. Right. Yeah, if that ordinance change would allow a 50-foot frontage in this zone, then you would have the ability to split those properties and make two legal properties out of it. Right. And there will be public hearings uh, asking for public input on that. Correct. As well. So, so I didn't mean to go to the planning board. No, no, no but I guess so. We're back to like the, the question of a reasonable return on the property, which you're questioning whether I could have it all. I guess is what I'm saying is that if I take the, the property value, is it? which is what it's taxed at, is $650,000. The, the, the appraised value of my house is 713. The houses have sold in the six to seven range. So the reasonable return on that piece of property is essentially zero. I'm getting really nothing for the extra lot. I'm selling my house for another 30 or 40,000 bucks with a lot that the town's charging 400,000. So no, there's not a reasonable return. I think it's, it'd be undue hardship to say, I've got to keep paying taxes on that and I can add 450 square feet of additional living space, but there's a, not a reasonable return on that lot in that neighborhood without splitting them up or without knocking it down and putting a big house, which is essentially what people are doing. So that's, I disagree that there's not a hardship. But, but see, with the way we have to look at it as the board, we can consider it, but we have to look at it, like the chairman said, as how it is right now as that one lot to us. And that, that lot can generate a reasonable return for you. That portion of your property may not generate a reasonable return. But we well, have I guess to look reasonable at it like the said. I guess if uh, as a single lot versus as a double lot, as a single lot, it, the, the extra lot is adding no reasonable return the way it's structured right now. See, but it's in the house, it's already, I mean, most of the value is in the existing house and lot, and um, you're, you're, adding, you're adding really not a reasonable return. But see, but in, in the eyes, in your eyes, you're saying this second lot to us, Even there, is, there so isn't a second lot. Right, so if you go as a single lot in a yes. return in that neighborhood is that you go up and down the street and the ones that are 50 by 100 are worth essentially the same as mine is. So you're asking the return on my single lot for what I'm paying in taxes, which yes. is close to double, yes. is not reasonable. Well, well that it, doesn't mean you don't get a reasonable return if you sell it. There may be someone that would be looking for a property that had extra front yard. Right, but I guess... I and mean, you're not forced to sell to get a reasonable return. But in this particular application, it's a single lot. And the question is, can we split it? We can't. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, but yes. reasonable return, how we have to judge it by, is not solely based on will you make money on that. It's not maximum return. It's, it's, no, no. Not, even, it's not even yeah. money, really. It's can you have a return on that property? Can you use it for other things? Definitely. And you could. You could use it to go out and sit on. You could... Do whatever. You can have some type of reasonable return. The fact that we have to look at it as there is absolutely no return to you of any shape, size, or form. It doesn't even come down to the money aspect for us, unfortunately. But we have to look at it that way because that's the way the guidelines stipulate us having to look at it. And that's the problem because I don't think, I mean, we can certainly go through all the questions and everything, but I don't think as myself or I don't know of any other board member, I don't know if we'd be able to approve it for you. I, I think we could probably take a show of hands as to whether or not we'd be able, to, if we thought we could approve it, and I think my guess would probably be no. <laughs> we could certainly do a straw poll if that would make you feel good. Well, I, I mean, I think whatever you could do, because I'm trying to, I'm yeah. going from this step to the next step. To build yeah. an, an auxiliary apartment is certainly an option, but even with that, I'd be coming back for a variance because I'd be going over 25% to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's really nothing. So either way, there's going to be something happening. But you keep, I, I know it's a single lot for tax purposes, but 
historically and by the town seat, it's not like any other single lot because it, it was two. It's in a neighborhood that's two. So to, again, the reasonable return, I think it's reasonable is a, is a logic-based word. So what's reasonable, whether it's I can go sit in the yard or not, but there's the, the return part of that has to be financial somewhere because that's what it says. It says, is there a return? Not, can I go walk in the woods? So but it's like no getting, reasonable return. But, but again, it's, and is it worth four or five grand a year for the yard? And that's because that's what it's being valued. The town is valuing it at $350,000. That's why I guess what I'm saying is it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's essentially, if you look at the, the two lots next to it, they're valued, the, the land is valued the same on each of them. So I'm being taxed like it's two house lots. Mm -hmm. It was two house and, lots. And I would suspect that that might be your first place to start. Yeah. Is definitely. to get out of the tax department and say, guys, this is an unbillable lot. I can't get a building structure on this second piece. I can't split them. You're taxing me like it's two separate lots. And I... I can't say whether they're going to move or not move, but I think that would be my approach if I were in your position. And the problem being is if we do vote on it and we deny it for you, that denial stands as a denial, whereas if we took a straw poll and said this is the way the board's yeah. leaning, it means that you don't have to, I, I guess, the fee and maybe the, what is it that no, he... The fee stays. The right. fee stays, but I... I if we were to vote negatively for a year, you can't do anything. Right. Right. That's the stringent. If we do vote, we go through everything. We vote no. That's the drawback. If you decide to come back and do well, no. I, guess, I mean, I guess the question is: You're telling me that how you're defining reasonable return? I guess is you know. And I've gone through some stuff on here that I think is logical, but I can't. You know. And, and again, the building inspector is telling me that you can vote on it, but you're telling me that you can't vote on it. So I'm kind of there's a little confusion of. If, it, if, if you can look at it as two lots, then you can look at it as two lots, or you can't. I don't know which it is, because Brian's sound, making it sound like you have the option. We can vote, can vote on it. They can vote on it. Right. They, they can vote on it. Okay. We may not be able to prove it, they, but we can vote on right. it. They may not be able to prove it. But right. Can vote but if they vote and they can't, I mean, they can't, they can't, can if they can vote on it, then they can approve in, it. In the eyes of the town, it's a single lot. And if you came before us and said, can I split this lot, we can vote on that. The answer is going to be no. Right. Yeah. That's the downside. And it, I, I believe I didn't. That, that's uh, I could do a quick straw poll. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not doubting you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And I think the other hard part of this is that you bought the lot as is. You you bought it without that other structure on the lot. So at the time you should have known that you couldn't put another structure on there. I'm, I'm sure you probably did know that at the time and until you saw your tax bill. And I, I, agree, I can empathize with you, trust oh, me. Oh, certainly. I, I think that uh, if, in fact, your taxes are that far out, then I would certainly be talking to the tax assessor myself uh, because that, I think that's probably the only place that you can get any relief. Yeah. And, and I can't guarantee you that that's going to well, happen. Well, yeah, they, they, that's, that helps in the, at some level, but I guess it's not. it doesn't answer the question. But the... Yeah. the you, do you talk, you're saying that there is some, somebody else that is at least looking at changes in the zoning? Correct. For that shoreline area? There is a, there is a committee that's currently looking at zoning in Higgins and uh, Pine Point because of oh. issues that we've had in appeals. They, they haven't gotten yet to, to the public input part Correct. Of it, but they Correct. will get to that and there will be public notices uh, and, and you'll have plenty of opportunity. Well, no, no, because I mean, I was here that most of the things tonight were from Higgins and they were all, you know, setbacks. Yeah. This, this new lot, I'd be able to be 15 feet off, 30 feet, I can, it'd be a conforming lot, essentially, with that, except for the frontage. Right, which is one of the reasons why the town is looking at this, because uh, with this many appeals, they realize that maybe the ordinance is a little out of date. So they're going to be looking at those areas with the specific issues that come up in those areas. And, and who is the person you're going to be talking to? Uh, uh, Dan Bacon, down in the planning department, is, I believe, one of the members of the committee, and he can certainly tell you when or, or, or what that plan looks like, and where it's going, and timing. Again, I think it's months away. It's not weeks away. So I, I wouldn't expect any yeah, changes. No. But, you know, if you, if you put out there a, a six- or eight-month window for an ordinance change, I think that's reasonable. And, and remember, because of all the public hearings and... Once the planning department comes up with their proposals, then it still has to go to town council before anything is approved. Correct. But they will ask for, for public input on it. And uh, may, there may, they may or may not have a mailing list, so you, you, you talk with them, maybe... You yeah, it's really that, man. We're just trying yeah. to figure out how to stay there, basically. You know, the taxes have yeah. tripled since we yeah. bought it, so... And again, I think it would be worth going down to the taxing group. And, and what you would want to tell them is in section... You might want to write this down. Section I-I-D-1-1. 
six dash seven in the ordinance. Yeah. It talks about how your lot became one single lot. And in the eyes of the tax group, I think it should be taxed as a single lot. But that's my opinion, right. not the taxation <laughs> department or the town. Can't come my taxes well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would uh, I would recommend that to you. Okay. The, the other drawback to us, I mean, we can certainly look at it, but I, I guess I would challenge the chair to do a straw poll just for the simple reason. Like I said, if we do vote no, we can hear it. We can vote on it. I think some of us are in agreement it's probably going to be a no. Yeah. That's but I don't want, if something does change within the next year, if we vote no on that, that handcuffs you for the next year, too. Right. And well, why don't we do that just so you can see? And, and there's nothing official about this straw poll. No, no, I'm, I'm so assuming that the straw polls, you guys are basically saying it's going to be hard to vote yes. I, I think it is. Yes. Uh, Mr. Marcissa, what would you be in, in our legal right to split from this single lot into two so you could construct two well, non-conforming? say our legal right is that we can't do it. We can't do it, <laughs> right? Uh, you just said that, right? Pretty much. Okay. Well, uh, no. Is that true or no? Well, again, it's it's personal opinion based on what I see in the ordinance. And again, I'm not a lawyer, and we act as a legal group for the town in making our decisions. So, um, I believe that is the truth. I believe it to be the truth. I believe he has a good leg to stand on. Looking at the. Everything's 50 by 100. Everything down there is 50 by 100. And the fact that somebody moved the building off there and, and now there is only 3,000. They're only charging us $3,000 more for that, not half. But I'm going to side with the council, I mean with the uh, board here, that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think uh, you have a good chance to get this changed by somebody. I mean, it's just... Yeah, I was hoping it was going to be you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean really, if I can legally do it, I, I would be... Well, again, right again, again I'm hearing the, the, there's a question of legality, and then I'm well, hearing that it's, I, it's whether I, or not they're know, answering the reasonable return question. Those right. are two different... You're, you're, you're saying two different things, so it's, it's not clear. If, it, right. if it's illegal to do, then there's really no reason to be here. I, I, if I can, If the question can be answered, then the question can be answered. And, I, and I'll answer both okay. for you. Sure. I think from a legal standpoint, we don't have a legal right to split a single lot into two non-conforming lots. So I don't think we have the legal right to do that. And from a reasonable re return standpoint, I would be voting no. Because the, the way the law is, or the way the ruling is written, it's not to maximize profitability. Right, I understand that. It's not to shelter from tax because if yours pays a little more tax than the guy next to you because it's a larger lot, it doesn't talk in those terms. It is it's truly about do you get a reasonable return on investment. And if you sold the property today as a double lot, I think you would find that there would be still be a reasonable return. It doesn't mean maximum return. Everybody would want to maximize their return. And I know it looks like there's a second buildable lot, but in the eyes of the town, I don't think there is, and I don't think there's a reasonable return. No, I guess the, the question is that the history hasn't shown that the sale prices of the single lots, the double lot, I mean, at least from my appraised values, are not three, two hundred thousand more. They're ten, twenty thousand. The lot next door sold for six hundred and eighty. Right. Mine's, mine's appraised at seven thirteen. And right. has, so that fifty by a hundred to get a reasonable return is thirty-three thousand dollars, which does not seem reasonable. I know. And so, again, it's how are you defining reasonable. You think, could somebody buy it so that it would be more than I paid for it? That's not reasonable. Is Again, it's a logic-based term that has to make sense, and it's not. And the, so it, it, and the legal term for that, if you look back through the cases, yeah. it's not about maximizing. It's oh, no, I understand that. I'm not talking about maximizing. I'm saying to, to, to say it, that the land has a value to it. Versus if it just wasn't there, it, like my house would be, it's like the land is not adding re a reasonable right. return. But in the eyes of the court decisions that have previously occurred, yeah. they don't care whether you're playing Frisbee on that for $50,000 a year. That is a reasonable use for that property, even though it's not what you want to use it for. So to pass the reasonable return test, it wouldn't in my eyes. Okay. I, I'm 100% agree. Yeah. With, with the sessions that we've sat through. Yeah, you've sat through. This is the first one for me. So no, no, we, no, we, we with the, the trainings that we've oh, okay. yeah. gone through. It's it's the question of the reasonable return, and, and I, like you, 
don't think that amount is correct, but it's by law and our definitions that we're told, it is a reasonable return. So if it's, I, I can't prove otherwise. I mean, I don't think the amount is correct, I should say. It but doesn't seem just, I agree. Exactly. But I guess that's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't and, seem just. And the point that the two, once, once two properties all of a sudden melded to one, again, is something that is beyond our control without that reasonable return. And as well, especially in that neighborhood, because essentially to create yeah. a conforming lot, you took two lots that were con essentially conforming in that entire neighborhood and split them and may, may force them into right. one. Yeah. And now you're saying you can't put it back where it was, yeah. even though everybody else on the street has got well, that split like, like several lots. Yeah. You know? let, me, let me just tell you that none of the lots down there conform. And right. That, and that's why we see so many cases from down there is because if anything anybody wants to do on their lot, they have to come to the, the Board of Appeals because they're, because they're non-conforming lots. And that's why they're looking at that area to make changes because those lots were established in 1900 when, when we didn't have zoning regulations. Right. Then when the zoning, current zoning regulations were put in, that got kind of thrown in with a whole bunch of other areas. And okay, we're going to require 100 foot lots. And it, that just became part of it. So that made every one of those lots non-conforming. So that's why they're taking another look at it now and saying, you know, so that may they may adjust that frontage, but that's the shot. Right. And, and until that, even though it's, you know, they, it might be not reasonable, it's the way it, it, it there's works. There's a good right. chance that they may make all those conforming at 50. Now, right. Once they do that, then you can die a better shot. You, there right. You go. Okay. But and I would agree with my colleagues. Get involved. Contact. Yes. yes, I will. Dan, and see what you can, even if it's just attending, mm -hmm. to get a better. Listen yeah. and tell your neighbors. Get involved. Thank you. Yeah, it, and I mean, do we agree with everything? Maybe not, but do we have to follow the guidelines by the law? And no, no, I understand. The way they go? You, you were clear with that. We right? we definitely do, and then that's the problem. Is in our eyes, we can't justify that. If it was kicked back to the courts and it came back to us, they would overrule us and say that we didn't pass that test and that we don't have the right. I mean, we can hear it. That's fine. But we can't we can't approve it because we have to approve all the questions as you heard in the previous appeals. We have to go through and out, and if we don't have the majority, we can't approve the appeal right. overall. Right. And I think it's the pretty much a no across is, the board. Yeah, we're not getting enough approval on the reasonable return part. But I get that. Yeah, I would say you're correct in that, and <laughs> you maybe it may do you good to just with, does he withdraw or I, table? I, I table. If you split it. Just that way, you're not handcuffed. That's. Okay. I mean, we try to work with everybody. The town right. tries try to work with you. I mean, the town did whatever yeah, they could to get, get you the to the right board. Right. Yeah. Right. But we can hear it. Doesn't mean you might not like what we hear. Yeah, I think the best choice is to withdraw at this point. Withdraw okay. your appeal, and then you have the right to come back to us. Yeah. Okay. And maybe some of these changes will occur. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You know, you've got the opportunity here because the town is really looking at this because, as you saw, all our time was spent on yeah, everybody from here. <laughs> non-conforming. Right. I, I wouldn't right. want to be down there with an $800,000 house that's non-conforming. It just doesn't sound right. And your timing is right. Well, the, 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 it is. it's a newer committee, so you they're just starting the review. You get your neighbors talking, and, and they'll, they might listen and say, hey, it's conforming. No, this is just, yeah, this, I was hoping this Once would be a quicker that, process, then, but it's a process that will be 50 by 100 is conforming. So. Yeah, thank you. So, rather than us okay. doing something that we don't yeah. want to do. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I guess my recommendation from this point is uh, put a withdrawal. Do you have to put a withdrawal letter, letter in? How, how does that? No, just do it verbal. Okay. Right now. Yeah, so, I just say I could just withdraw. I'd like to yeah. withdraw, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, we couldn't give you better news. No, no. I, no. And thank you. And, and good luck. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we note that you have requested a withdrawal of yes, your application. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for your patience. And good luck. Yeah, but definitely be vocal about your concerns. So that was the, uh, the last appeal for the evening. Do we need to sign that? No, I just Okay. All right, thank you. Signatures. Um, I'd like to know if there's any comments or questions or i got a couple of things I'd like to put out there. Um, meetings.
since we are short on people and we all have very bu busy lives and we all have uh, multiple things that we do, I've asked Carol to give us a, an email two weeks before the meetings. If you guys could respond back with whether you can be at the meeting or not within a couple of days, what that will allow us to do is if we have to postpone a meeting, it will give us a week of reaction time to get to the applicants. Then we can either you know, reschedule or postpone altogether if there's not a lot of activity during that, that month. So um, Carol will start doing that from now on. Please get back to us within a couple of days. May I just jump in real quickly sure. um, for, for, for the next meeting? Because if it's in two weeks, we would like to just give you all a verbal. And uh, if you could please respond to Carol within, within by, by Friday, by the end of Friday, so that she'll know whether you'll be here or not. Certainly. And uh, we'd also put out to the public that we are still in need of uh, board members. So if you would like to get involved, it's not all that scary an activity. There is a learning curve you come up. but. Uh, as you can see, I bumble through this uh, <laughs> regularly, so we're all kind of learning together. So feel free to, if you have interest in uh, becoming a board member or a member of appeals or any other boards um, within the uh, town of Scarborough, please come down to the town, sign up, show your interest, in, uh, and we do need bodies. So please, uh, yes. The application is online. Okay, thank on you. On the town website. Okay. It does require approval by uh, by the board. Um, so. Uh, excuse me, the council. So it does take some time, but uh, it is worth it. It's uh, the pay is not great. Uh, it, we are all volunteers, but uh, you do give back to the community, and our efforts are to try and um, make good decisions for the town, so that it is a balance between um, controlling how the ordinances are applied and doing it in a legal fashion to make sure that we keep the uh, lawsuits on our town down to a minimum. So uh, the reason why we're doing it is to ho hopefully save money for our town and give everybody a fair shake so that um, they can also get an appeal, but we do it in a legal standpoint. So again, yes, Mr. Mercer. I'd like to appeal to you <laughs> to go to the town and get this straightened out. Every time I come here, four out of the five appeals are, are because of this nonconformity. And, and, and it's not... And we got things to do. We're busy people. So I had to hire someone to come stay up by the loft the house so I could come down here. Right. One, one of the reasons... Take, take these away from us. We could be a little bit more productive. One of the reasons that we, uh, we sat down with Mr. Bacon and had a discussion with him mm -hmm. about some of the appeals that we're seeing. Good. And, and he had already come to us, or, or at that same time came to us and said, look, there's a... A committee out there we are addressing it so it was in process we didn't even have to ask so I appreciate the proactive stance that the town's taking but we did do that so uh, we, we do know that we shouldn't have this many appeals and they're trying to do something about it so uh, one of the things that we learned at our training that we went to about a month ago was that if you have this many appeals coming it may be a good sign that there's, there may be ordinance issues and I think the planning department is doing the best they can within the guidelines that they've got, and I think it'll take a slight modification, but they're working on it. So. I, I would think a lot of this, yeah. that, that we're approving the, the building aspect, I could say you're right. That, that looks good with the approval of the town council, and, and not, they don't have to go to the zoning board. The, right. The building aspect, I could yeah, with, yes. with, with uh, an ordinance change, it clearly could free up them with some of the time that they have to address some of these issues as well. So I think there's going to be a multi-level uh, benefit. Thank so. you. Mr. Chair, something that came up tonight, and I'd really like to express it to the people, is if you see something that you question that's being built on your property or next, next to your property, rather, or an addition or joining things together, don't wait maybe five or ten years to ask the questions. Ask the questions right away so that we've got some background and the planning department and the zoning department have some background. They can go out and inspect and say, okay, this is legitimate or we need to address this and this is something that needs to come back before the zoning board for approval so that we know because it's for staff and ourselves. We can't go out and police this stuff. If you're in your neighborhood, you can help us greatly yeah. understand what's going on. Anyone else? Just Let's like go. to uh, remind everyone to uh, go out and vote on June 10th for the school validation vote. And uh, I'd like to congratulate the graduating class of 2014 in a couple weeks. And the yes. concert's coming up as well. Good point. Next, next meeting. 
Anyone else? Again, I appreciate the input that we're getting from the board. Continuing to question makes us a stronger board, so keep doing it. I think it's moving us in the right direction. All right. Move Thank to adjourn. You. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.